what is surgery for an intramedullary spinal cord tumor or a tumor in the spinal cord itself? That's a fairly um, involved surgery that requires a number of people involved to, to keep it as safe and efficient as possible for the patient. Um, so that includes um, not just me, but a number of other providers, the anesthesiologist and the neurophysiologist that help us monitor all the electrical activity um, in the spinal cord. When we do the surgery to actually get into the spinal cord itself, we take advantage of the natural anatomy of the spinal cord. So the very back part of the spinal cord is where all of our sensory information passes through. It's also where our position sense is, so we know how to walk. That back part of the spinal cord, it's, it's if you think about like two columns similar to my fingers, we map that and we're able to identify the natural separation between those two and we open it. Um, so we actually open the spinal cord and that allows us to um, then remove what's um, behind those columns, if you will. Some tumors were able to sample or biopsy and some were able to remove completely or at least to debulk a portion of it with the goal of diagnosis, maximal safe resection to relieve some of the pressure on the spinal cord tissues and ultimately to treat the tumor. Aftercare for a child who has a posterior fossa brain tumor, or the, the actual name of the surgery that we do is called a suboccipital craniotomy. Typically the hospital stay is going to be anywhere from three to five days. Then they go to the regular floor. And then we have them work with the physical therapist, occupational therapist, and occasionally the speech therapist. We want to really make sure that kids who have tumors in this location don't have any impairment in their swallowing um, because our swallow centers are located in that area. So for the intramedullary spinal cord tumors, the aftercare or duration of stay in the hospital and, and rehabilitation, part of that depends on how symptomatic the child was to start. So if the patient has some difficulty walking, weakness, numbness, things that were already a challenge before surgery, those are often still challenging and are going to require a fair amount of physical therapy and occupational therapy, and sometimes even a, a period of time in a rehab facility to really maximize recovery. In the short term though, um, typically immediately after surgery, the patient goes to the intensive care unit, we'll keep them there overnight, and then the next morning we'll typically start to get them up and out of bed, um, sitting in a chair, trying to get them um, mobilized a little bit and the criteria to leave the hospital is typically that your pain's well controlled on something you can take at home. You're able to do the things you would normally do at home, like walk to the bathroom and dress yourself. And if those things are still requiring some additional help, then we might think about stuff like whether or not a patient would benefit from rehab. Some patients may not have any symptoms um, going into surgery, and they may have some subtle symptoms after surgery, and, and those patients may actually go home you know, within a few days. A lot of the recovery depends on how significant um, the neurologic deficits are going into surgery, and also how sensitive those spinal cord fibers are as a result of having that tumor and that uh, manipulation. The spinal cord's very sensitive, it needs time to recover, and we do typically see patients continue to improve and recover weeks to months, even up to a year out after surgery. <laughs>